I'll make a motion to go back in the open session for your second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? Ms. Williams, we go on roll. Mr. Reagan? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Robert? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Lyskoff? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Williams. No action was taken in executive session. Uh, Mr. Woolworth, is there anything else I need to say? Thank you, Mr. Woolworth. Number four on our agenda is the Treasurer's Transfer Report to the chart. Yes, and that's dated for February the 26th. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Mm -hmm. Ms. Williams, you may call the roll. Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Lasko? Yes. Mr. Reagan? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure. And number five, presentation and approval of all bills. Action is requested. I'll make a motion to approve the bills. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion on the motion? <coughs> Ms. Williams, you may call the roll. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Williams. And number six, approval of the minutes. Let's take each uh, meeting one at a time. Action is requested on the special meeting from February the 8th, 2016. I make a motion to approve the amendment in favor of the we'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Ms. Williams, may call the roll. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Laswell? Yes. Mr. Reyes? Yes. Ms. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Motion And February the 16th, 2016. Make a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion on that motion? Mr. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Reagan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Reagan. Is Brian Kirby still present? No, ma'am. He left. He said he would reschedule with your clerk uh, on a future date, but he had another appointment in Richmond. Okay, I know when I left. I went to the executive session. He said he could stay for a little bit, but maybe not that long. All right, thanks, Mike. He did most of the business. Oh, yeah, if you want to just, yeah, let's just uh, table that. Right, 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 right. So as you might hear, the resolution 14-12, uh, that okay. is to allow the county judge executive to sign uh, and authorize uh, Ken Ann the treasurer to make payments on the money received on the Marlin Avenue sewer project as they come in. And that's resolution 14-12. Uh, I do it uh, you think that's it? So, I, so you're suggesting we take action on that particular resolution? Yes, Judge. Yes, on that particular agreement, there was not specific language in there which allowed the county judge and the treasurer to pay money on this grant. It was presumed that you had that right, but uh, as far as presumptions, we would prefer to have it in black and white. So we send it that uh, report. Thank you, Mr. Clarity has that. I said we prepared a motion that would just clarify that in accordance with the fiscal court resolution 14-12, that the county treasurer is authorized and directed to process payments, and the county judge executive is authorized to execute payments for the community development block grant of the Marvin Avenue Sewer Project upon approval and submission by the Bullock County Sanitation District. Works those hours if uh, you want to wait to make that motion and I have a copy of the warrant for the record. Okay. <coughs> I'll make a motion we accept resolution 14 12 as written. Is it revised? No. Yes, this is the revising and clarifying that's right. Yes, it is. Any questions or discussion on that motion? 
The motion is an amendment to resolution 14-12 in accordance with Bullet County Fiscal Court. Resolution 14-12, I believe that the county treasurer is authorized to direct the payments and the county judge executive is authorized to execute payments for the community development block grant for Marvin Avenue State Project upon approval and submission by the Bullet County Sanitation District.
is hereby changed from agricultural to R1 residential. Section 2, this order shall take effect upon passage of publication. Given first reading to regular meeting of the Fiscal Court of Bullet County, Kentucky on the first day of March 2016. Begin second reading of vote upon at a regular meeting of the Bullet County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of March 2016. Thank you, Mr. Flaherty. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor of this zoning request? Is Mr. Cole in here? Mr. No. So no one wants to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition of this request? Okay, Mr. Richardson, we will do the first reading of public hearing of zoning ordinance 2016 dash 07 Tina Song. Uh, in this Tina Song asking to rezone 10 acres more or less from agricultural to R1 residential. The commission again heard this case on February 11th and sent a favorable recommendation to this report because it is in agreement with the adopted comments. The zoning ordinance number 16-09, series 2016. An ordinance changes the zoning from agricultural to R1 residential. The property in question is 10 acres, more or less, located at 220 Slate Bluff Trail in an incorporated area of the county. For the fiscal court of Bullock County, consider the evidence of the public hearing of the planning commission and the recommendations of the commission. And we're asking the fiscal court to encourage them and also the reason the planning commission for said zoning change and approve and accept the recommendations of the planning commission in this matter as set out in said minutes. And now, therefore, be ordained by the fiscal court of Bullock County, Kentucky, section one, that the above property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County, and more quickly described in the minutes and records of the planning commission in document number 2016-Z-07, is hereby changed from agricultural to R1 residential. Section two, this order took effect upon passage of publication. Given first reading, the regular meeting of the Fiscal Court of Bull County, Kentucky, on the first day of March 2016. Begin the second reading of vote upon, and a regular meeting of the Bull County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of March 2016. Thank you, Mr. Clarity. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor of this zoning request? <coughs> Is Ms. Song here? Okay. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition of this zoning request? And we have one more first reading and public hearing of zoning ordinance <coughs> 2016 08, Active Heroes Incorporated. Mr. Richardson. Uh, the Active Heroes Incorporated has been rezoned 4.0083 acres more or less from agricultural to R1 residential. The Planning Commission heard this case on February 11th and sent a favorable recommendation to the fiscal court because there have been major economic, fiscal, and or social changes within the area of the requested zoning change which were not anticipated in the adopted conference plan and which have substantially altered the basic character of the area around this requested zoning change. Now there was a stipulation with this case. Uh, there were reported plats that were signed off by the administrative official between the years of 1974 and 1976 that declared R1 zoning, but there was no rezoning that actually took place. Uh, like I said, there were three sections that were signed off by the administrative official. Who was the administrative official? That's still on. That's still on. Well, he signed off on it, but it never took it. It's never been to a bed. Correct. That's interesting. Uh, I know that, I don't know if the court wants to take a list. I know Mark Edison is a representative for active injuries. I don't think he's here. No. It's a different time. It's the court will have to proceed. Mr. Edison wants to come to the second meeting and ask to make a comment that the fiscal court is not able to go out and do something. None of the applicant is wishing to ask for a refund in the amount of $200. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clarity. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor of this request? Zoning ordinance number 16-10, series 2016. An ordinance changes the zoning from agricultural to R1 residential. The property in question is 4.0083 acres, more or less, located at 1022 Ridgeview Drive in an unincorporated area of the county. <coughs> the rest of this report of Bullock County is considered the evidence of the public hearing of the planning commission and the recommendations of the commission. The rest of this report concurs in and adopts the reach of the planning commission for said zoning change 
and approve and accept the recommendations of the Planning Commission in this matter to set out seven minutes. And now, therefore, be ordained by the Fiscal Court of Bullock County, Kentucky, Section 1, that the above property located in the unincorporated area of Bullock County, and more particularly described in the mentioned records of the Planning Commission in Document Number 2016-Z-08, is hereby changed from agricultural to our own residential. Section 2, this ordinance will take effect upon tax and publication. In first reading, the regular meeting of the Fiscal Court of Bullock County, Kentucky, on the first day of March 2016. Begin the second reading voted upon the regular meeting of the Bullock County Fiscal Court on the 15th day of March 2016. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor of this zoning request? In favor of anyone here that wants to speak in opposition of this request? That takes care of all of our zoning requests. All right, thank you, Governor. Patrick, that's number four under new business. I wish to appoint, or I make a motion to appoint Leanne Johnson to the Bullock County <coughs> Library Board. If you so desire, I would appreciate your support. Thank you, Governor. Yes,
paramedic training with KCTC. So once they finish their classroom time, this will give them an up on getting their ride time done a little bit quicker. So when they're not working or being, they'll be able to ride with us. And then what it'll do is um, allow us to have other students come in and get um, a sense of what whole county EMS is about and get them in the doors to help them and hopefully convince them to come to work for us. So it's a two-fold benefit. Who, uh, who respond, who's got responsibility for the college? The college. College. Great. So they get early. College picks it up. College picks it up. And then um, our, if they are God forbid, they have a wreck or um, <coughs> they are covered, we can't go for that. Other than that, they have um, their own insurance policy. Um, and then KCPC um, assured us that they've had all their privacy training all of the required education that they need before they place their work. Just take on more. Yes. They didn't know that, so since they yes. don't find the ability, they're still covered. Yes. Yes. Are they allowed to operate the vehicle if needs to be? No. Well, our employees, if they are employees, even though they're off the clock, yes, they will be able to. But if they are not an employee of Volcan Fiscal Court, they cannot operate the vehicle. So they're covered if they are in the motion to accept that there may be a long agreement as long as each one can sign the agreement. I think it'd be a good thing. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion on the motion? I'm a little bit 
confused if you went back there to not talk about me and you have and you came back out here and you're tabling something it just i'm just saying I, mean, well, we were, I, I think it's pretty obvious to anybody in the room if you're really listening and paying attention we wasn't until you made the statement that you had counsel people don't have counsel unless they're that's not wrong back and discuss litigation that has nothing to litigate when there is no litigation. Possibly there is litigation. Just saying, would you read that back to me, please? That's all I'm after. I just want to more clarify. Well, well, I, I gotta ask a Seven years. 
And I assure you, there are people who get attorneys every day that didn't do one thing wrong. And I'm sorry to come to that, because most of you are fine, respected gentlemen and ladies of this community. You are. I'll give you that. But it's time the citizens got an answer. It's time the citizens were told what's going on and to put these men and their livelihoods at risk, not knowing whether they have a job or whether they need to go one day, because you want to you know, play word games with what he said they said, it is wrong. <coughs> Sell it tonight. Come to the agreement. Go out back and get you, you know, a situation where somebody comes back in charge. But settle it tonight. Do not keep going with them. his attorney, your attorney, everything else before it is happened. Because I assure you, if what you do will be remembered at the election board. I second that. Judge, I'd like to speak. Sheriff, I'll take my ride up in the morning for speaking out loud here. <coughs> You're officially off the block. Well, I am. I know. I'm not off the four hours. I usually do my work over for this uh, county. Representatives from your off our office, as well as the county judge's office, contacted local government during the last term over appearing in the red on money. They assured us, as well as the county judge's office, that the offices generally run in the red during their term, and we were just fine. The judge knows that. He even said we were, we were operating better than most counties around. <coughs> Only four, I know that you also probably have heard that supposedly we have to provide a police patrol or whatever else. Only four of the nine counties with a larger population than us provide a regular crime detection and respond to normal calls for terms like burglar alarms, burglaries, assaults, homicides, and so on to their sheriff's office. The law is very clear on what's required of the sheriff's office. And even the elected officials county handbook tells you that a sheriff's been, this is a quote, a sheriff spends most of his time on civil duties as opposed to criminal or law enforcement duties. They are not designed to act as police departments with the requirement of the state budget system and to conduct the Constitution that we're all well aware of now for the past year and a half that we've been dealing with this. KRS 64346 permits the court to pay for any expenditures for the efficient operations of the sheriff because sheriff's offices are locked on their income and cannot raise funds or taxes to pay for extra things such as normal law enforcement or crime detective division. Examples, Boone County has about 30,000 more residents than us, 30,000 in the unincorporated area of the county. They receive $11 million in their supplement from, bullet, from their fiscal court. Warren County has about 20,000 more residents than us. They receive $6 million in supplement from their fiscal court. Those are high numbers of people compared to what we're getting, which is just around $1.5 million until this now year, $1.8 million, which you all approved earlier this uh, three months ago. When this current sheriff's administration took over, there was a high crime rate that involved at least 200 plus burglars a year, sometimes 300, almost 400, in the unincorporated area. Each year, the hardworking men and women just stand up around here that work hard every day for this county lower that rate. In 2000 2014, we were less than 120 burglaries in the county. That's unheard of for a county our size. Unheard of. Last year, because we needed to cut money, we didn't replace six different positions. That's four patrol positions, one criminal detective, and one drug task force spot that went unfilled. Guess what that did? Our burglaries went back up to 190. And that's still with more people on the street and more people working the street than you had the last administration. Nothing against the last administration, but that's why I have to compare it to since we're Bullock County. Trying to start a county police force, which is another thing I've heard, will only cause you more problems. Looking at a neighboring county police force, they received $3.9 million from this board to operate. That's a total of 29 people that they had. We provide 33, 33 people for law enforcement for $1.8 million cost to this report. That's with your 250 that you approved a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. That also includes the health care and retirement costs that I know that there's a disagreement on whether or not you'll be responsible for health care and retirement. Again, you pay for one fee off of certain things. Uh, I think that the Attorney General said you have to pay for others. How do you justify spending an additional $2 million plus dollars every year to have four less people? That would be complete fiscal irresponsible and irresponsible. irresponsibility. <coughs> in 1990, when the county police force in Bullock County was disbanded, Rick Carter voted against it. I'm sure some of you all know Rick. 
11 years after that interview, or after that, he was interviewed about Boone County disbanding their county police force. He said, I'm going to quote exactly what he said. It did work, and it was the most econ economical decision all around. I learned a lesson. He learned a lesson about how much money they save by switching to the sheriff's office for running the road. The choosing to pay this one-time cost of less than $700,000 to avoid at least an extra $2 million annually is the most economical decision all around. You're putting the financial lives of all the employees around here on the line. You're putting the lives of the citizens on the line by not taking care of this tonight. You all know for 70 days you all have known that March 14th is the last day of criminal patrol by the sheriff's office. You all have known this. And today, you all have an agreement with the state that was provided to you all almost two weeks ago. I'm sorry, about a week ago. You all know what that agreement says and how it can be done. And to take no action on that. So vote it down if you want to vote it, if you want to vote it down. But don't sit up here and say, we're not going to take action. Take action. Stand up and say no. If you want to say no, say no. Don't sit here and say, we're going to table it. You have 10 days to protect all these people and all these people. I suggest you tonight, but that's my opinion. Thank you. You guys all live here. 
you know? Melanie? Melanie? And could I say something? Well, I've got to follow Robert's rules, so... Well, I didn't sign up, but they didn't either. I know. I, I want to tell the police officers we respect them let me, so much. Let me, let me it has Patrick. nothing to do with the police officers. Let me, let me ask Patrick Mitchell since he's called for a vote. Okay. He, out of respect for the elected officials. But I just want them to know that this has nothing to do with each and every one of these people that put their life on the line for us. How did they get so distorted? That's not true. We don't think about it. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, it's just not true. Well, Judge, didn't you have five or six people that wanted to talk about the YMCA pool program? But you only had three talk about the Sheriff's Department budget, which is, I think, pretty important. Point of order. Out of respect for the elected officials, we have to take a vote. Because the magistrate has asked. For a vote to be taken. What table do you need, guys? I have to do what the Robert's rules order say. So they can have what they're doing, Joe. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, Our office, but these guys are out here 
start. You never know when they walk up and knock on the door, somebody's not going to pull a gun like they have none of these other parents. <coughs> I've got 20 years in. I can walk out any day. These guys back here, a lot of these are young. They're just starting out. They're new blood. And you all just don't seem to care. Most of them have grew up here in Bullock County, just like I have. And I just don't understand why you all and our department do not get along. It seems like you can work with every other department, but the sheriff's department, I don't know if it's political, I don't get into political issues, but it sounds like it's what it is. And you heard what uh, Mike Murdoch read, his facts about these other counties and what they do. You don't realize that we traveled last week alone to 13 counties picking up inmates and bring them back here for court. Then we have to turn around and take them back. That was money that the fiscal court used to pay us up until a couple years ago. They saw paying the smart. Grant your gas goes up and down. You still got wear and tear on the car. Right now, my is <coughs> not a small in the state from January to the end of this month. That's what the state pays. And you also used to pay us for serving <coughs> subpoenas. We don't get paid for that anymore. You keep taking away, things keep going up, and you still don't want to seem to help us. So I think y'all need to sit down and put your heads together and decide, do you want protection? When we had these long breaks in here, who was the first agency on the scene? We were. We have an active trainers group that can go into a school any day and take down whatever has to be if we have a shooting in one of our schools. They do training all the time. And like I said, I've got 20 years. I can go out any day, so be it. But I'm thinking about these people that I work with every day that's like my family. You all need to start thinking about your families. Thank you. Maybe they didn't know that because it sounds like they don't. 
And what, what I'm, I'm totally confused, but what is it they're asking you to do? I mean, I thought it was over, over budget. It was about money. I thought it was over that the sheriff's department overspent his budget, didn't pay the state the money that he owes. Is that it or not? Do you, you want to answer the matter, Trustee Ryan? I mean, it's confusing. You know, the only thing it is is, you know, we don't pay the sheriff's budget, basically. And the sheriff asked to have his deficit paid, okay? They went to the state. He's trying to figure out whose deficit this is. You know, what, what was going on? He sent people to the state. Representative from the uh, sheriff's department was there. Keith Griffey was there. I mean, the state said the deficit was the sheriff's. I get plain simple with the sheriff's And I don't want, I, you know, I don't get into 25 percent and all that. So that's the purpose. They give us an agreement to pay it back. All we're, all we're tabling this is, is for his counsel to look at that agreement to make sure he's agreed to that agreement. Because the agreement has some flaws in it. Because if we agree to that, you know, there's a lot of things that it, the state didn't have a, I guess a, a lawyer designed it. So we want to make sure that his, that his counsel looks at it and our counsel looks at it and their things agree on it. It's not about that we don't like the sheriff's department. They can say that they can go on and on and on. It's about money. Everything boils down to money. I understand the pool that. system needs money. 400000 You know, our, our recreation needs this. Our EMS needs money. Everybody needs money. You know, it ain't, it's not about these officers. I know they lay their lives down on this. I know that. But it's trying to figure out a pot of money. That's all it is. It's trying to figure out a pot of money. We can sit up there and yell at you and call you names too and tell you that we're, we don't like you and that we're sorry we don't man up. But we don't do that. We sit and listen to you and listen to every complaint because we do. But the process is is everybody's got to be in agreement for this deficit. Because it's coming out of every one of your money. Including yours. Including theirs. They pay taxes too. It's coming out of, you know, you've got $638,000 that's going to be out of a budget that's already been made. Which we would love to do. I would love to do that. I absolutely would love to do it. But we've got, I don't even know, my resident. You know, what do we got in the bank? Eight hundred well, we don't have that in the bank, but we don't have the money to and I understand it's over time, it's fourteen thousand dollars a month. I understand that. But it's not in our budget. We've got to figure that out. We want to make sure his counsel is okay with it because if we sign that and say that today, everything's fine, <coughs> something goes wrong tomorrow, we don't have ramifications for anything. So the process is, and it's a sucky process, excuse my language, but everything designs around legal lawyers. I don't know. I guess he'll, his, his lawyer will get with our county attorney and they'll look at the paper and it's an agreement with both parties and then we'll, we'll agree on that. Will they be sued? Will they lose their job? Will they lose our protection? Well, that's up to the legal counsel, I guess. They have to get up to the deadline on the you know, that's not You know, that's not our call. We're not laying nobody off. I to be one of those. Right. You know, Dave Greenwell awesome. personally is doing it. Nobody else. Dave Greenwell personally is going to fire all these people and they're going to draw unemployment. And guess who's going to pay the unemployment? The county. So there's a lot of things involved. There's a lot of motions. There's a lot of people, you know. And it's, it sucks that we have to make a decision. But if the decision ain't made that we don't want to give them money. And they can talk all day long. She can get mad and shake her head and go just, Joey, you know. Joey, but, Randall, you weren't talking like that while ago when you were talking face to face. I was talking to some <coughs> yeah. There's a lot of things we have to do. Yeah. Did you just find out there was a problem with the money? How long have you known there was a problem? Well, we just got there the other day. They found out a year ago, correctly. If, speak correctly. You found out a year ago that there was an issue with money. There you go. There was an issue with the. You just told her a few days ago you found the agreement. You all got the. You all got notice a when year ago. When did we get the agreement, Mr. President? Yes, sir. When did we get the agreement? A week ago, and it was actually, and we discussed it, and the sheriff was in fine with the agreement. It's a little farther than a year, right? 
But you found out about the issue a year ago, about the money issue. You got the agreement a year ago. Nobody came to the office to ask us. They kept asking Kerry and Rigdon, um, everybody else, what the issue was. They never, not one time, came to the office except that man right there. The rest of them didn't. He's And Melanie. And Melanie. That man. Last one. Last one. Last one. It is that when it's our lives and people are going to get laid off, it is about us. So that's why we're upset because they've had 70 days, over 70 days, to look at this and get this figured out, knowing that the sheriff told them this is what he's going to have to do. The reason why is because you, we are operating a police department inside of the sheriff's office of 33 people that we do not have to legally require to do. They're not legally required to do it. And so that costs around 60% of our budget, and Myrtle's work on the correct numbers, but about 60% of our budget pays for that patrol division that we do as a service. The sheriff, and it's not just Dave Greenwell has done this, Donnie Tennell did this, Paul Parsley, people in the past have done this. They do it as a courtesy for the county to save from paying $3.7 million that the county's going to have to come up with $2.5 million. If they took away our $1.5 million, our health care, retirement, everything else, the deputies that they would keep on, they would only gain about $1.5 million. They would still have to come up with, to have even close to the same number of people that we provide, they would have to come up with $2.5 million every year. This is $700,000 one time. One time. And this is, when you average it out, it's $200,000 for the last three years. Each year was about $200,000 if you even it out. It's pretty simple. It's a very low number. I know it's $650,000, that's a lot of money. But when it comes down to the whole financial and fiscal responsibility of it, it's pretty simple. Well, when they set the budget, it was $300,000. Uh, initially, three years ago, it was $300,000 they provided for that patrol division of uh, 33 and people. That, and that was raised to $600,000. Yes, ma'am. Uh, last year. Another 250000 And that's the only way we're going to they're both survive at the thing. That's why there's a budget. That's why there's a deficit with the 25%. There is a whole lot to it, like they said, but you take away the 25% fee, everything else, you've got a whole, whole mess. And also, but like I said, there's a lot more to it because you look at crime rates and everything else, People want to be safe in their home. That's one of the reasons, I, I, I will guarantee admit to you that that's one of the reasons that the money is higher, but also you look, they're not explaining it all the time, but two years of that, they were under budget. We were under budget. Well, it's I, just, I the problem is money didn't come in that was projected to come in. Well, I was here when they addressed that. And, and, that's, and, that's, and that's why the money went up. I mean, that's the thing. It's pretty, pretty clear on that. That's why we're just asking them to pay the money that they say. They say, if you look at the 850,000 they give us this year, the last three years, they've saved $1.45 million by not paying us that money that they're now paying us because they obviously voted then, they understand. We cannot operate that money. So they voted to give us the 850000 a year. Well, those years passed, they only gave us 300000 then they gave us 600000 then they, now they give us 850000 That was $1.45 million. That would put us $700,000 to the good. But it didn't because we didn't have that money. And it's, 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 it's I'm a, sorry. It's, I'm, I, I don't know anything about I understand. That. But I do know that um, we need we know that. And to show that respect, we should be paid. I mean, that's how you show your respect. Well, we haven't received a pay raise in five years because we don't have the money. That's the, even though the other county employees have, but uh, the best thing. Hopefully, it's other jobs. That's what we hope. Well, thank you. Thank you, though. I know it's confusing. Right, you table this now. What is the process for you to actually take action on this? How does that work? The lawyers have to make it up. And I bet goes past the March 15th date and you lose the support of the sheriff's department control division, you're just going to let that happen. That's a decision. You have no plan B? Yeah. Well, what does the sheriff's obligation after the 15th? They are answering the statute. He has a duty to provide support. It does have to patrol roads by the statute. It does need to find how much patrol. He has to work accidents. What the sheriff would not have to do would be domestics uh, because that is something that gets into the law enforcement and that's not out of the statute. He would not have to really do burglaries and robberies because, again, that is not outside that statute. So his duties are limited by statute, which are, again, patrolling roads, 
making accident reports. If there is any type of criminal involvement in an accident, he has the duty to uh, make that report and prosecute that as well. Outside of those duties, he has other specific statutory duties with the report out related and <coughs> But you can't take action until you're in another fiscal court session, correct? Unless you no, they, 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 they actually could, Mr. McCoy. If, if Mr. Greenwell has an attorney who contacts us and, and sit down and look at that and say it's all in order, they can have a special meeting with 24 mm -hmm. and that is resolved. I can, I'd like to respond to some of Mr. Radio's comments and some other questions that, that you all may have. Uh, this can be settled tonight. Uh, it can because the way I'm looking at it is we got to where we're at attempting to do the wrong thing. Now there's only, now I'm not talking about the county's budget. I don't control the county's budget and what they allow to, to either do or don't do. Uh, but speaking about my budget, from the sheriff's office, we've only had one <coughs> over the budget. Something to keep in mind is when we went to this new system with the state, we had one day's training. That's all they offered. For the next several years, every time we called Frankfurt, and, and Ms. Craddock confirmed this, uh, uh, my office, <coughs> Merle French confirmed this, every time we called Frankfurt, when all these accusations that was being made that we were, you know, going way outside our budget. The, the truth of the matter was they kept telling us, you're right where you need to be. This is Franklin talking. Don't worry about a thing. You're right where you need to be. So we all go into it blinded, and I can guarantee you, and I'm not, I don't mean disrespect to anyone of you that I understand, but I can guarantee you none of them can sit down and tell you exactly how the system works. No, and, and come up with uh, the right answers. The what I would like, to, something else I'd like to respond to. The way we can cure this tonight, you know, I'm going to have to. I've got legal counsel, but the legal counsel I have has already told me that this is beyond them. That I need somebody uh, with a lot more knowledge than they have in, in areas like this. So, unless this gets settled tonight. I have to go take out uh, money from the equity of my home to go pay a former U.S. attorney to represent me in some matters. Uh, they're going to be tied up. They're going to spend thousands of dollars litigating this, possibly. But the bottom line is the way this can be fixed, if, if all they're worried about and all I'm worried about is fixing this problem, just fix it. We don't have to have an agreement. This $638,000 was created <coughs> for various reasons. All they have to do to cure this problem, and I want you to keep in mind one thing, I, I'm going to back up here for a minute. Uh, Kevin Mooney, I love you to death. You're one of the finest, thanks to your mom, you're the, probably the finest person we've ever had in your office. And you're doing an excellent job. And I have no problem with anything that you've done. But I need to give an example. It, basically, Kevin, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've got back the 25% basically because they know you need it, right? I mean, they, they compensate you in some sort of way to, to make up that 25% of your feet off. Can I see it? Sure. 